Okay, I've started putting this core together, and I wanted to show you some little tricks I've figured out while I'm trying to build this. I'm using a template so I can get the alignment right on each one of these coils. This material is like, um, came from a dress box. They use it in boxes, these uh, storage boxes. It's fairly flexible and when you bend a crease it leaves a little white line in it you can see here uh, it's perfect for this you could use plastic like from um, uh, a peanut butter jar or something like that if you wanted but this worked for me the best it's really thin so I'm not losing any space in between each one of these winds I started winding one on the machine over there and uh, I had an issue. I overwound it considerably. Um, you can see here, th this here is 900 turns on each one of these. That, by the time I got that wound, it would have been uh, too small for the rotor. So I've got to back some of this off. I've got a new plan to make this a little bit easier. I'll show you on the winding how, how to wind it, but on the winder. Um, but basically, I'm going to have to pull um, 100 turns or so off each one of these before I can continue to wind it. Um, and I'm having an issue here where you can see I've taped this up, right? And it's putting pressure and actually moving the coil over as I wind it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these box spacers here that I put in here so when I wind the coil there's nowhere for it to go. It, it basically stiffens these little parts up so as I wind it's right up against that tight and then I can remove the block, wind the next coil and make sure that these coils are not getting off center if you see here, this line here, this basically is off center. And it's it's really my fault. I was running the thing too fast. I started winding it by hand, thinking I could keep it in line easier. But that just got so tedious that uh, I broke down and used a winder. And now I've got to go slower. And I've got to... Um, block it off on both sides of the coil I'm winding in order to make sure that the coil stays within the boundaries of this space because if it's extending it's throwing off that uh, synchron synchronized movement of the field flipping so it has to I have to redo that a little bit make it a little smaller and try to fix it but basically this right here is really pretty simple you know I just taped use that same material we're going to use met glass uh, for this I'm waiting for a shipment of met glass from one of the four members who basically took on the task uh, G47 took on the task of arranging the shipment of met glass that we needed to build these next generation staters uh, that will be two inches thick. So uh, I'm waiting on that, and this is to test how well this works using the alternator type. Okay, I'm gonna when I release this template template for this, uh, I'm gonna include on the page these small pieces which are basically the measurements to create these uh, parts that fit on this thing which basically just stiffens up the coil and keeps it from um, messing the winding up on on the stator so I'll include that on this when I release this document probably be a little while I have to verify how this works and make any changes before I release it so it may be a while let's see so 
So uh, basically, uh, I'm going to show you how I, it, it's it's pretty simple. You're you're cutting these parts, and then you're taping them to the core, and you're using this pattern to align with those dark lines there. That that allows it to you look. That's it's, it's pretty much right on where it needs to be. So as you add these here, you can see how they line up. And you have to tape this up against it. So I'm not sure if I need to show you how to tape that. Um, it's really fairly simple. So I'll go ahead and tape this up. And if I don't take all the time showing you how to tape one of these on there, which basically you're just putting them up, buttoning them up against each other, and then running a tape around that until you covered that area, and then ensure that your alignment is proper after you put each one of these on there. And what the other thing I'm doing is I'm putting white tape and verifying the direction that each coil has to be wound. So it doesn't get confusing when I'm doing it on the machine. I, the machine is reversible. So as I wind them, I don't have to flip this over. It's basically one of the things I added to the winding machine is uh, uh, Russ had mentioned it. He put it in a foot. Shoot. He put it in a foot pedal. But what I did is I added a foot pedal to mine. But mine is just a, a micro switch in there. And uh, I put this on there so I could adjust. It's pushing on the trigger. It's nothing complicated. This is a drill uh, motor. And this is the drill guts. And by putting this little switch in there, you can turn this and that adjusts the speed of the drill by applying pressure to the trigger um, and then the foot switch just activates it at that speed so once you got the speed dialed in you're only stopping and starting it with a foot pedal and then it's, this is a reversible switch for the drill and by just flipping the switch I can reverse the direction of the drill so I'll show you how this works here I, I gotta get a battery for my my counter battery died so I've got to work that out but uh, I probably won't be able to cover that in this video I'm trying to make these videos a little shorter so um, next generation's attention span isn't that great so I figure I'll make the video shorter and you can actually find what you want in the videos by shortening the videos uh, the subject matter would be a little more condensed let's say and uh, I'm going to wrap that right there and then I'm going to finish winding this in the next video I'll have it on the machine and show you how the blocks how it's blocked and how it works based on the new system so for now this is Technomancer for Zero Point Fuel signing out